Today we've come along to Barrett Snooker Club in Northampton. Uh, we're going to watch uh, young Karen Wilson uh, do his practice routine. Now one of the things that happens when these professionals go away to uh, play in the tournaments is there are limited practice facilities and they have to make the best of those facilities. Now Kyron, as with all the other professionals, it probably be allocated something like 20 minutes or at the most half an hour's spots for his practice. They have to make the best use of these pra this practice time. So Kyron has worked out his own little routine that lasts for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and he can cover most aspects of the game. Now the first thing is Kyron will have done his physical warm-up prior to getting to the table, where he'll loosen the shoulders and the neck to make himself feel comfortable. Now he wants to get used to the table, hit a few balls, learn to relax. So in this context, he will put the colours on the spots, reds all over in nice potable positions, and then just get working on uh, hitting the ball nicely and smoothly, and as I said, getting used to the table and relaxing. Karen, one of the things that is important for you guys is the speed of the table. How does this help you to get used to the table, you know, uh, mentally and physically? I think, as like you say, obviously you want the balls in nice potable positions. Um, the, the cloths are reasonably new when we go on to the venues and you know you want to be getting used to the different slides of the cushions and, and playing certain shots with sides so you want to make things as easy as possible firstly to warm up um, you know as I, as I can see in this setup I've covered one pocket to the black so I want to open that up to make it nice and easy for myself and um, move this red off of the cushion I sound a bit negative doing this but the worst thing you want to be doing before you're going out to a match is making things difficult for yourself and giving yourself um, you know, the wrong frame of mind by maybe making your practice a little bit too difficult. Mm -hmm. So um, hearing what Kyron said there, when I'm, I go along to the tournament with him, uh, quite honestly, I'm a little ball boy. I'm keeping an eye on his technique and we'll have a chat about things. But basically, I'm, I become a ball boy and I'm taking the balls out. If things go slightly wrong, we might have a little chat later on. But Kyron is at the standard now that all he needs is a little bit of help, to, a little bit of company, uh, just to make sure things are fine and he's comfortable with what he's doing. So can I ask you to you know, start your warm-up, Kyron, and away you go. And as I said, I will become a ball boy, replacing the balls on the spot. One of the things I would like to emphasize is it's far better to have half an hour of purposeful practice rather than 10 hours of just knocking balls around. Kyron is a, something of a methodical player, but also he likes to be relaxed and he will never ever come on a table and mess around. And I will urge you to do the same. Get your own little practice routine and stick with it. Don't just hit balls around for the sake of hitting them. If you miss a shot or the white ball doesn't go where you intend it to go, just have a little pause and a think. Why has that gone wrong? I think for you know an amateur player or a beginner or a professional, I think it's always important to, like I say, make things nice and simple. Um, you want to get your arm going, so make make it nice and flowing around the black, around the pink spot, around the blue spot, and you know you do want to vary it a little bit. You want to be travelling up and down the table and. Like I say, get used to the, the new cushions and the new cloth. Yeah, lovely. Thanks, Guy.
Now, normally, the referee will not stand in the line of the shot. When we're practicing, you know, I am keeping an eye on Ty Kyron's technique, ensuring that he's on line and that his cueing's okay. And Kyron, it doesn't put Kyron off in any way, shape or form. He's used to it by now. Don't know, I think you do put me off. Oh, All right. A okay. little bit. <laughs> when you're doing this type of warm-up, Kyron, are you uh, concentrating on centre ball striking or do you flick the odd ball in with side? How do you feel about that? Um, you know... A lot of the time we are just about to go out onto a match table so a lot of the time the practice table the cloths are new as well like I said before and you just try and dictate with the white see what's going to happen and see how it's going to throw off with certain touches of side and how the cushions are going to react so sometimes I must admit there's no need to do it but in practice just to see how the balls are going to react you do tend to play with a little bit of side just just to see what happens and get used to it. That's lovely yeah a good point getting used to the table. On these professional tables, uh, especially when the cloth is new, uh, there's a sheen on it. And when you play with side, the cue ball gets pushed off line quite significantly. So Kyron would want to get used to that element of the cloth. I think that's like a common example there of that shot. The right shot would have probably been to play off one cushion for bulk colour or blue, but I wanted to examine, see how the cushions were playing and, and play down for the black. That's not necessarily the shot I would play in a match, but just to experiment, see how the table's playing and, and yeah, just, just have a bit of fun, really. Lovely. Yeah, Karen's mentioned there that uh, he's having a little bit of fun getting used to the table. There's a big difference between having fun and messing around. You have to enjoy what you're doing and experiment a little. There's a big difference between that and just knocking balls around and messing around. Kyron is all the time learning from what he's doing, getting used to the table, how it reacts. The odd miss he's not too worried about. Yeah, he's just uh, remembering that he's in practice here. He's missed a shot, and now he will say to himself, why? All right, and try to work out why. I think normally, if I was to miss a shot like that, just before going out, I would set it back up again. Yeah. And um, just play it again until I get it right, really. Uh-huh. Again. Good, good thing for your practice. If you miss, reset it up again, have a thing. Why did I miss? What can I do about it to make sure I don't miss again? A lot of Kyron's played uh, that shot with a little bit of left hand side to check the ball off the, off the ball cushion. Players, generally speaking, when they're cutting to the right, uh, tend to play that shot or prefer to play that shot with a little touch of left-hand side. Equally, when they're cutting to the right, uh, they prefer to play that with a little bit of left-hand side. Uh, cutting to the left, they prefer to play it with a little touch of right-hand side. That's not every player but certainly a good majority. Quiet little screw shots. Very important to get a feel for the table. 
how much physical effort does he have to put in to get the reaction on the cue ball? On your club tables, when the, by comparison they're quite slow, then you would have proper, possibly have to hit the ball a little bit harder. But what you should be concentrating on is timing. A nice sweet contact between cue tip and cue ball. The smoother you hit it, the better you hit it, the more you get through that ball, then the quieter you can hit it. Karen has got as much cue power as anybody in the game. Right? But that has not come natural. He's had to work at it. And even Kyron has the odd miss. We'll set that up again, particularly these long shots. He's examining his cueing. Once again, flicking possibly a little touch of left hand side on there, which is unintentional. So now he'll just examine what he's doing again. And there we go, he's rectified the floor. I think um, getting the use of the rest involved as well is quite important. You know, I could have screwed that back to leave myself quite straight on the yellow, um, but wanted to leave it like this just to try and get used to the rest before I'm about to go out and play as well. Lovely. Yeah, very important aspect. And Kyron is probably one of the best players I've seen using the rest. No doubt about that. Very good player with it. But again, it doesn't come without hard work. Frustrating work. He's gone through the process of missing just as much as everybody else. And then from there, if you do work on the right things, progress comes and then you miss less often. Beautiful technique, nice and simple. Wrong side of the blue, possibly in kind of stretch favour because he's not too worried, he's practising. He needs to play all the shots and get used to the table. Notice there how he's played round the angles coming into the line of the pink rather than across it. Beautiful. From there, Kyron, in your little 20 minute or half hour routine, we move on to cutbacks. Yeah, cutback blacks. Um, just try and vary the angle of the black, trying to cut it back into the pocket. Um, we normally like to do both sides so that you're getting used to the throw on both sides because in this sort of shot, you're trying normally to play this with maybe a touch of left hand side from this side just to kick the black in. And from this side, you're playing it with a touch of right-hand side to kick the black in from that angle. So important to practice both sides as well. Yeah. And one of the things uh, for the viewers, when we're talking about a cutback, it's a blind pocket, what we call a blind pocket. So they're very awkward even for professionals and they need practice. And the thing so. is as well, um, as I said before, the cloths are normally quite new. So... You know, compared to playing this black with a touch of left-hand side on your practice table at home, um, if you're playing it with left-hand side on a newer cloth, you have to sort of change your, your guess guesswork um, when you're hitting the black where your aim is. So this is why it's quite important for me especially to practice this sort of routine before I go out. And I notice you're starting from quite an easy position and uh, you move into the more difficult so again, don't start difficult and go to easy. Always start easy and go to slightly more difficult. So now he was, his first white was here, now he's coming down here and the next one will be even a more acute angle. A 
And here we go again, slightly more acute, slightly more tricky. Remember that, you know, once you're playing this shot, the reds are normally around here, and if you miss it, you're sticking your opponent up. So make sure you don't miss this shot. Kyron spends a lot of time practicing these cutbacks and indeed playing cannons on reds around here just to make sure he knows where that white's going. Again, he will practice the routine from both sides of the table. It's always a good idea to practice routines from both sides, otherwise you develop a preference for one side of the table. Please don't let that happen. That will give you problems. Hitting the ball nicely, Karen. Lovely. I think this is why it's important to spread the balls in a nice position before you begin properly as well, just to try and find your timing and, and find you know your, your technique, really. Yeah, lovely. Well done. So the next one is Kyron needs to do. One of his strengths actually is his long potting. But that strength has been developed through practice and more of it, lots of it. So here, what one of the valuable shots for professionals and indeed amateurs is to pot that long red, play it as a shot to nothing, coming round the back of the black up towards the bulk area. And Kyron is very good at this shot, but he's only good at it because he practices it. And this is part of his 20 minute routine. I think it's a similar sort of aspect to the, the cutback blacks. You, you're also throwing this red in with a lot of left hand side to try and create the angle to swing round. You're imagining you've almost got the blue on the spot and the colours on their spots. And you're, you're looking for this angle off the two cushions. Um, so to get used to the throw of the side, over distance, this is a shot that I like to practice quite a lot before I go out. Yeah. Now you'll notice he swung that round, played it as a shot to nothing with ball. Now, Kyron played that with side and emphasised the use of the side to swing it round the table. But let me just say there's only a minimal amount of side on it. You start putting extreme amounts of side on and you're going to miss. It, it's silly to use a lot of side unnecessarily. Do you agree with that, Kyle? Yeah, certainly. Especially on these fine cloths as well. As I said, one of Kyron's strengths that still needs a lot of care. I think that one thing that I'll vary in my practice whilst doing this as well is you can dictate where I'm playing the white. So the first two I've hit quite firmly and I'm trying to get round into the bulk area. I can sort of now try and practice maybe timing it a little bit better, hitting a bit sweeter and uh, holding for the blue in, in either area here. Lovely. this time not quite so much power. Yeah, I've actually under hit that, so yeah. I maybe hit that a bit better than uh, I would have liked. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure Kyron will agree, the most important thing is the pot. You never sacrifice the pot for playing position. Karen never misses quite a lot of these. If he did, he'd be asking questions of his technique. He obviously misses the odd one. This is a difficult shot. And uh, the player that can't miss, he's never been born. And quite honestly, he never will be. Oh, he bit that one sweet, Karen. That was lovely contact. Yeah, that's where I wanted to be. Beautiful.
Again, you'll notice he's practicing from both sides of the table. And there's that odd miss. So Kyron will be asking questions of himself now. Possibly, can he ask you to queue alongside the white, Kyron, just to get a feel? Maybe you've, queuing's gone offline. I, to be honest, I think it was probably referring to what you said before, maybe playing with a little bit too much side there and, and through the red into you know, the thin side of the pocket. So maybe this time just try and take a little bit of right hand side. Okay, of it. that's fine. And there's the difference. Kyron has admitted that he played with too much side on that other one that he missed. Reduce the side, consequently is a little bit more accurate with his potting. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Karen. Here, in this little practice, we've set up uh, a few reds, eight in this context here. We're uh, queuing off the boat line, and they're about a foot away from the boat line. And all Kyron is doing is examining that he's on line, hitting the ball, in the cue ball, that is, in the centre, and queuing nicely. I will stand behind Kyron, overlook, uh, occasionally just make sure he's online and hitting the ball in the middle. And that looks okay to me, Kyron. It looks lovely. Just nice, sweet contact on the red. Beautiful. Now that uh, I've determined that he's okay at that end, I'll move down to this end and just make sure that uh, everything is okay from this view as well. And nobody can argue with that. Absolutely beautiful. Not too hard. He's not belting the ball. Equally, he's not stroking it. Uh, trickling it, rather. Because you don't want to run the risk of the ball rolling off. But equally, you're not hearing this sound. Yeah? All that will do is create errors. Very nice indeed. Again, other side of the table. Every time, every practice he does, he will try to reiterate on the other side of the table. Very nice. And the pressure on the last one now. <laughs> Now, obviously there, Karen, you, you've queued very nicely, you've potted all eight, n not even remotely look like missing one. The fact that you've done your warm-up there, do you believe has helped you to achieve that? Yeah, because like you say, on, on the first one where you watch from behind, you're seeing if my cue's going through straight, but not only are you looking to see if my cue's going through straight, I'm examining where my cue's finishing and where the white ball's finishing after I've made contact with the red. and. You know, I was quite happy with that. My cue seemed to go through straight. The white stayed where I was aiming, and yeah, they've, they've all gone in the center of the pocket. Well done, thanks. And we move on then to the next part of your practice routine, which is the tea like you like to do. Yeah, it's one of those uh, routines that you can vary. You can take it with all pinks or blues or blacks, and it just gets you in a bit of a rhythm before a game. So, here what we've done is set up the balls in the shape of a T, commonly known as the T practice, self-explanatory as to why. And in one of my earlier videos, you can see Kyron doing this routine where we're looking at the technique that he uses to do it. It's a useful routine and one that most of the pros will practice a lot. 
They get in a feel around this area here where the pink and the black. Because these are the main scoring balls. So can I ask you to make a start, Karen? Red and pink, please. Beautiful. Now you'll see also when he's positioning this white, for the pink, you'll notice this, this oblique angle between this pocket and that pocket. And there's a diagonal line. He wants to be slightly this side, so it is coming away if he's concentrating on the pink. He don't want to be this side because he'll be cannoning into the reds. Okay, Karen. It's lovely. Now, when it's appropriate for you, Karen, can I ask you to concentrate on red and black? Yeah, I'll do one more pink. Now, this time, you see, he's gone a little bit straighter on that diagonal, so he can run through now and get on one of these reds and then later on get in the black. Okay, he's chose to stun the ball, because obviously I misread the angle he got, but here now he'll be concentrating on the black ball. All these stun shots, always in control. Now one of the things that you have to learn is how to control the, the cue ball coming off this top cushion. So you're going to leave a nice angle, high on the, uh, eye on the black, so you can pop the black, come off this cushion and dictate where that white's going to go. Yeah, with this sort of routine, the last thing you want to be doing is landing quite straight on the black because the reds are in this line. You're obviously limiting the space that you can use, so you always want to, like you say, finish high or finish low. Again. Just that nice little angle on the black and he has a choice of a stun shot here or following through going around the angles. His decision, whatever he prefers. Okay, so we'll cut that practice short, Karen, and move on to the next part of your 20 minutes or half hour routine because, uh, you know, it's a little bit uh, boring to watch you do this, quite honestly, because you're too good at it. You know, what we want to do is move on to educate the viewers as to what you're doing in your practice routine. Okay? Yeah. So the next thing you do is working on the rest. Is that correct? Yeah. You know, I said earlier on in the video, um, it's very important to get used to the rest. You want to get a feel of, of the rest. And um, this is a common thing that I like to do. I like to play the first red um, with stun. Now I like to play the second red with top spin and play the third red with uh, screw back, just to vary it a little bit and um, get used to the feel of the rest. And as I've said on many occasions, Karen is probably one of the best players in the world using the rest, but nevertheless, he still has to work hard with it. So there he's played with top spin, one with stun, and then the following one, following one with top spin. Now he'll play one with screw. I'd probably say, would you say this is probably the toughest one to play it with screw? Oh yes, undoubtedly. Needs a little bit more power, and it demands a little bit more on his accuracy. Quite a lot more, to be truthful. Then we've played three shots there: stun, follow through, and screw. And now he will repeat it again on the other side of the table. We keep emphasizing that. Don't just practice from one side. Always do it on both. So there's the stun shot. Playing with these shots with possibly a little bit more power than is needed, but it's practice and all he's doing is Rehearsing his technique and examining his technique. And there's the top spin. And then finally, he'll play the screw shot. Now, 
Now, you, if I can just stop you there, Kyron, uh, you'll notice that Kyron's Q action is, is not exactly in one plane all the time. There is a little bit of flamboyance, not one that I would recommend for a beginner. I like to see a beginner keep that Q in one plane, but Kyron has developed his Q action, and even with this little bit of flamboyance, right, he cues exactly straight in a straight line. So as I've said many a time, if it isn't broken, you don't fix it. Okay, away you go, Karen. It's broken, we need to fix it. <laughs> oh, I got some screw back on that though. You do. I'd like to talk a, a little bit for the, for the viewers, Karen, about the technique when you use the rest. Now you uh, use a one finger grip. That is that you wrap this forefinger around the cue. Your elbow is quite low here and you're quite long in your backswing here. Mm -hmm. Now another player that's very good with the rest is Sean Murphy. Yeah. And he uses a two finger grip here and recommends that the elbow is quite high. I think it just proves the point that everybody's an individual, everybody's slightly different in how they do things. And if you can find something that works for you, then that's it. You know, you leave it well alone. You only start looking uh, for answers when the, when the person has a problem using the rest. And you might change from a one finger grip to the two finger grip or vice versa, from the two finger grip to the one finger grip. I know that uh, with one uh, particular professional that I know, he always used to use a two finger grip and he was quite good with it, but he was not happy. He was not 100% certain that he was good enough with it. So he changed to a one finger grip and he maintains it's more of a, a pushing action rather than a strike. How do you feel about it in general? Well, I, firstly, I'd say, you know, that's one of the fascinating things about this game. You know, not only with the rest, but with technique when you're, when you're queuing on the table. More or less every technique is different. You know, if we're all doing the same thing, I think it would be quite boring to watch. So, um, yeah, for me, I, I like quite a nice, long, flamboyant swing. Um, using the one finger, I feel like I get a lot more zip on the white when I need to screw back. And, um, yeah, just... just I find that I get through the ball a lot better with that long, long swing with a one finger grip. Yeah, I mean, when I've practiced with you, or, or let me rephrase that, when I've been poking, picking balls out of pockets for you, you know, I have been astounded by some of the shots that you can play with the rest. And I haven't taught you that. It's something that you developed on your own. And quite honestly, you look at it and you say, well, that is not broken let's leave well alone. Well, I think another thing is, you know, as a, from playing from a very young age, I've played since I was about six years old, you know, being quite a, a small lad from yeah. that age, you know, I'd had to use the rest quite a lot. So that is a very natural style of grip and action with the rest. So I'd just say it's just something that I've grown up with from, from using it quite often. I think that says it all in a nutshell. Very, very good. Thanks, Karen. Here, Kyron uh, he needs to practice his safety. And we set up four balls here and diagonally. And the object is to shoot from the balk area, find an edge on the red, off the top cushion, possibly the side cushion as well. But the real object is to get the white ball as close to this cushion as he can. All right, now it's important for him to do that. A, to make sure, and sure that he's cueing correctly and that he's aiming correctly to find the edge of the red. But secondly, to judge the pace of the table over its 12 foot length, to judge uh, the pace of the cushions, because you know they all vary slightly, and you want to know that he's judging this pace correctly. So can I ask you to play a few shots, Kyron? There he's found a, a nice fine edge on the red and he'd be quite happy with that safety shot. What, what value do you think you get out of practicing this, Kyron? 
Well, I think, you know, it's probably sort of looked past in a lot of, lot of players' practice. Some people just want to pop balls. And, you know, the main thing behind this, this video is that I'm trying to show you what I would tend to work on just before I go out for a match. So, you know, one big aspect of snooker is you have to have a good safety game, especially in today's era. So to practice just before I go out, finding that thin edge on the safety shot, I'm just judging the distance that I need on the white to try and find the bulk area. I'm trying to get as close as I can to the cushion. Off these two cushions especially, once I've found that edge, you know, they're sliding. Some can have a slight delayed bounce because they're new cushion cloth. And, you know, you're just taking all these aspects into consideration. Thanks for that. Lovely. The fact that he's potted that red is incidental. What he's, what he's really after is that white ball. As near to that top cushion as he can. Two on the trot, Karen. Very good. <laughs> I mean, you, you can see these shots as a bit of a shot to nothing. You know, the pot is on, but like you say, I am looking for the white to be as close to the cushion as possible. Three on the trot, absolutely phenomenal. Would you say, Karen, apart from the white ball there, that there is a, shall we say, an element of luck in, in getting this pot? I think, um, you know, it's down to practice as well. You find the certain angle, you know roughly where the pocket is when you're down on this shot. The more you practice it, the, the closer you're always going to get to that pocket. And obviously the bottom reds on this are very hard to chip in because the angle is so acute. But the further you go up the reds, then, you know, the pocket is opening slightly. Yeah. I suppose you could relate it to the golf player. You know, I mean, the chances of, <clears throat> of a professional getting a hole in one are far greater for him than it is the amateur because he keeps peppering the green and peppering the hole. And at some stage, one is likely to go in. Yeah, he's always getting close to the hole, isn't yeah, exactly. he? Exactly. Nice contact on the red. You notice again, we're playing the same routine from the other side of the table. Very important. You're getting too good at potting the red as well, Karen. <laughs> well done. I think one important thing that I'm sort of aiming for in this sort of routine as well is you're imagining that the bulk colours are on their spots and as a professional, you're always trying to aim for this sort of area to try and cover a potential loose red that sticks over a pocket. So you are always aiming for this sort of area. Yeah, I get the point. So what we're really saying is not just trying to play safe, we're trying to put our opponent in trouble as well. Slightly short on that one. Should we have that one again? Yeah, okay. Possibly caught the red a little thick, yeah? Yeah. Lovely. Very impressive, Karen. And then finally, when we're away at the tournament, and it's time for us to pack up. We've uh, used our half hour allotted time. We've just checked on the board line that Kyron is placing the cue on the line and he's aiming correctly. Uh, and then we'll move on to do what we call three and ten. So he would have three attempts at putting the cue on the line and I will be checking. And then he'll do ten reps where he takes his body away from the cue and does nice, long, slow swings just to make sure that he's cueing on that line of aim. 
right, without the body supporting the cue. We use that to groove these muscles. Please carry on, Karen. And that is spot on, young man. Spot on. So there's number one. Number two, again, spot on. And number three, Karen. Yeah, that's spot on as well. So chest very slightly away. Here what we're doing is queuing along that line. And I'm checking that he's queuing straight. He's taking the chest away from the cue, grooving the muscles of the arm and the hand, feeling how the hand returns to the cue, and I'm just checking that everything's okay, and that he will tell me if he feels uncomfortable with it. Kyron, that's absolutely beautiful. Well, thanks for that, Kyron. That was lovely. I think that covers the 20 minutes or half an hour that you get prior to going out to your matches. I'm well aware that you know, practice tables are limited when we actually get to a venue. Uh, I can't thank you enough for giving up the time, showing the, the viewers of the YouTube channel. Hopefully they've learned something from it. I'd like to ask your feelings on it. I mean, my own feelings are that it's better to have, shall we say, half an hour of purposeful practice than it is to, say, have five, six hours of just banging balls around. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I, you know, that's something that I believe quite strongly and I prefer quality over quantity. You know, maybe there's certain players that are overdoing that. You know, they're putting too many hours in and, you know, maybe messing about playing at it instead of working at it. Um, I do feel like I could maybe put in a few more hours, but I prefer to have match practice. You know, I play the likes of Peter Ebden quite, quite regularly. Um, but this is the sort of thing that I do when I'm on my own and do a bit of solo and, you know, it's working for me so far. You, nobody can argue with that, Karen. You know, the final of the Masters, absolutely phenomenal achievement. You know, from a couple of years back, you was in the 50s, now you're in the top 16. Uh, the, you know, it's a meteoric rise to the top echelon. Well done, mate. And thanks very much for I've today. I've only got there with your help. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>